Having Oral Roberts with me is so special. You know, I spend much time with this precious man of God, and I'm so glad he is on the program today. When I go and talk to him, I receive so much from the Lord. And I've asked him, I said, would you come back and be on the program with me and just minister to God's precious people? And I'm just so glad you are here today. You know, when I sit with you in your home, I received so much from the Lord. And the last visit I had, he talked about faith. Now, I have never heard this truth presented as clearly and as powerfully. Now, is, you know, what is amazing to me is the Lord keeps showing you things. You want to talk about this amazing uh, new truth that God showed you? Benny, I would be glad to. I didn't know you were going to ask me that, but that's, that's on my heart all the time because I'm trying to practice what the Lord shows me. Hey, and I have continuing revelation from the Lord. And uh, in Matthew chapter 17 and v verses 19 and 20, a remarkable thing happened concerning faith for those people and faith that we can have in our time for the things that we face every day of our lives. Exactly. That's what I like about it because it's for the now. Jesus had been on the Mount of Transfiguration and down at the bottom of the hill there was a man who brought his little afflicted child, was possessed with, with, with demon spirits and the disciples were, were there and he asked them to cast the demons out and they tried but they failed. And Jesus came walking up, and the man cried out, your disciples couldn't do it. If you can do anything, please help me. And Jesus said, sir, it's not if I can do anything, if you can believe. Mm. And the man says, help my unbelief. Jesus cast the spirits out, and the little boy was well. And so as they were walking away, the, the disciples said, Lord, why couldn't we cast him out? And the Lord said, because of your unbelief. And he said, if, this is verse 20, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you don't even have to have a lot of faith. If you just have faith so small, it's no bigger than a little mustard seed. You can say to this mountain, talking about the problem that they tried to cast out and could not, you be removed and it will obey you. It will be removed. And then he added these words, nothing shall be impossible unto you. That is awesome. Now, I've read this hundreds of times. I have studied it, but recently while I was reading it, the Lord's revelation power came upon me and he said, notice two different words. He said, notice what they said to me. Why could we not cast this evil spirit out? Why? And notice what I said in reply. If, if, yeah. if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, they said, why? And I said, that's the wrong word. And often we hear people say, why? Yes, All why has this happened to me? Yeah. What have I done to deserve it? Yeah. How many times have I said the word why when I should have said the word if? Why has this happened to me? Who can answer the riddles of life? Who can tell me or you or, or you why bad things happen to you? Who can tell you why you can try so hard and you don't make any progress? Jesus said it's the wrong question. Don't say why has this bad thing happened. Say 
if I can have faith as a grain of mustard seed, I can speak to this mountain of need in my life and tell it to go and it will be removed and nothing will be impossible under me. Well, it was like you shone a light upon my mind. And instantly I thought at the times, I, I'd said, why, 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 and only befuddle myself. And then I remembered the times that I thought of my faith, that if I had just enough, just a little of it, no more than a tiny mustard seed, if I had faith, then I could speak to this bad thing and tell it, get out of my life. Mm. And suddenly I would be in a realm, an attitude, a new world where things were possible to me rather than impossible. If I could make one point today above all else. Stop saying, why has this bad thing happened to me? Or why can't I do this? Say, if I have just a little bit of faith, I, even I, the one that just said the wrong question, the one that just said the big why. I can speak to this mountain of problems and needs. I can speak to it and tell it to get out of my life. Now, let me ask you a question. Yes. Faith. Yes. Is that something God gives you or is this something you develop? Faith is not something you have to get. It's something you already have. As a Christian? Well, no, everybody, because if a sinner didn't have faith, he could never believe God and get saved. The Apostle Paul said in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 3. Yeah, to every man. God hath given to every person the measure. Of faith. Was he meaning every person, every person on earth or every person every in the church? Every person has faith. The difference in people is not in faith. The difference is the one uses his faith right. He uses his faith to believe God. The other person uses his faith to go into unbelief toward God, but to believe this world system, which is controlled by the devil. You know, we always think of faith as belonging to the, to the church only. Well, the right kind of faith right. belongs to, to, the, to the church. Right believing, presumably, is something that we Christians practice. But sometimes we Christians have unbelief because Jesus said to these disciples, when they said, why couldn't we cast him out? He said, because of your unbelief. We Christians sometimes get into unbelief and we stop believing toward God. The right kind of faith, God's kind of faith. The God kind of yeah, faith. Yeah, talk about that, please. Well, there's a, there's a faith a measure of faith that God gives every one of us. And we can use it right or we can use it wrong. Yeah. You know, if you didn't have faith, you wouldn't even get out of the bed in the morning. That's right. You wouldn't go to work. You wouldn't drive a car. You, you wouldn't eat food because you'd be scared to death. It would poison you. Uh, faith is everywhere. That's right. Faith is in, in the whole wide world. It's, it's in all human beings. But it's not enough to have it. We have to release it. We have to aim it toward God. At least I'm talking out of my own life. 
I have wrestled with using my faith in the right way. I've not always used my faith uh, in the right way. There's so many times back there I've used my faith to get into unbelief and to use my, my faith to, to believe certain things in the world. But when it came to, to the Word of God and to the things that He's promised, I didn't believe it all. But Doc, look what you did. I mean, you used your faith right to build a great university and a great healing ministry. So well, you did right. But I was assailed by the devil and by many unbelievers that I couldn't do it. And there were times that they just almost knocked me to my knees. And uh, I would sit there or, or lie there and I'd toss and uh, I'd wonder if I could have the faith for this. But God never changed toward me. You're going to build it by the same ingredient that I used when I made the So world. you overcame. Well, I overcame it at times. There are times that I get out of faith in unbelief during a period, and I have to go back to the Bible. This is why I was reading this scripture again, because I've always admired this scripture and what Jesus said to these disciples, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, mm. you can speak to this mountain. You see, I have to get back to that because I get off track. I don't know of anybody, including the most devout Christian, who doesn't get off track once in a while. Benny, I'm sure there are times oh, I have. that your faith is not way up God, here. Of course not. I remember in my crusades uh, with the big tent of 10,000 people filled out and I was praying for so many people including a hundred invalids a night by the laying on of hands. And one hot night, I sweated so bad, I sweated my clothes down. And when I get tired, my faith is not as strong. So when I got around 11 o'clock that night and I'd prayed for hundreds, my, my strength was gone. And so I dismissed the crowd. I said, I'll start again tomorrow night where I leave off tonight because when I get this tired, my faith is not strong enough to help you. So I was uh, hurrying to the car and get to my room mm. yeah, and uh, get something to eat and, and get to bed and get sleep so I could recover my strength. Well, while I was on the way, I felt someone take hold of my clothes in the back. And the person was so strong physically, I was just whirled around. And it was a woman, a very tall, strong woman. And she looked at me and she said, Oral Roberts, you stopped the prayer line too soon. I was in the line coming up. And in a moment or two, I'd have been in front of you and you stopped and I've got to leave tomorrow. I've come a long distance. I'm about out of money and I've got to leave tomorrow and I've got to be healed. And I said, ma'am, when I get this tired, my faith just doesn't work well. She said, I don't know about that. I've got to be healed tonight. And so I, I tried to pull my coat out of her hands, but my coat now was wet with sweat and stuck to my body. And I couldn't extricate myself from that woman's grip. So out of, uh, I don't know, I think I got angry. And I put my hand on her head and said, Heal her, Lord. And to my surprise, she just sank to her knees put her hands up and began to rejoice and praise God for healing her. And I thought to myself, my God, what's happened here? And so she left and I went on in, in the car and got to my room. And as I was pondering over this, that still small voice in me said, I healed her all right, mm. but you won't get any credit for it. It wasn't my faith. I was really angry.
I think he honors faith wherever it is. Absolutely. Faith is not always where you're looking for it. It's where you find it. Say that again. Faith isn't where you always look for it. It's where you find it. Explain that. Well, I have been so sure at times that I had faith for some hard a case that I was praying for, and not one thing happened. And someone came along, and I looked at him, and I thought, this person doesn't have any faith at all. This will be a total washout. <laughs> and they got healed. Some way I've misread the face, the expression on the countenance. I didn't know the heart like God knew the heart, mm. and that person had the faith, and I thought I had it, and I didn't at that particular moment. In the healing line, with hundreds coming, and, and, and my laying uh, hands on them, first getting their name and address and, and what was wrong, I would have feelings about who I thought would get healed and who I thought might mm. not get healed, and many times I was totally surprised because Faith is where you find it. What would you tell somebody watching this program right now that is facing a mountain, facing a problem? What would the answer be? I would tell you exactly what I tell myself. Because I face mountains. There are times that I try something and completely fail. There are times I have problems and I don't do well with them. Sometimes I have a pain in my body and I can't get it out. And you know what I find myself winding up doing? Why? Why? Why has this happened to me? What have I done to, to serve this Lord? I've served you, I believed you. Why? I tell you to stop using the word why can't I do this? Or why is this bad thing happening? and switch over to the word if. And this is what I say to myself, Oral Roberts, if you have faith, just a little bit of faith, no bigger than a mustard seed, which in Jesus' time it was said to be the smallest seed on so the earth. So you just release your faith? Pardon me? You just release your faith? Well, I sort of have to go through what I'm talking about. I have to move from the why to the if, if I have faith. Well, of course I have a little faith, you know, even when I hurt. Even when I failed at something, I have a little faith. Now all I've got to do, this is the truth, is, is simpler than we think. All you have to do is to release the little bit of faith that you've God, I remember the other day, I had fallen upon my ribs, and I didn't know if I just bruised my ribs or if I had uh, broke, broken my ribs. All I know, I was hurting so bad at that moment, I could have cried. And uh, the lady who, who was nearby helped me to lie down. And the first thought I had, why? Why did mm. this happen? And the Lord reminded me of uh, Matthew 17 and 20. Oral Roberts, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain. And you know, this was at night. And I knew I wouldn't sleep. I, when I lay on the bed, I hurt so bad. I really could have cried. But suddenly, I felt my faith at least was starting up. It was going up to God. And the next thing I knew, I didn't know anything. I was asleep. And I woke up the next morning, not knowing the previous night if I could get up that next morning. I got up and I went to breakfast, and uh, that was just a few days ago, and I'm nearly well. 
You know what I mean? Do you, do you realize when you really break a rib how long it takes for, and the doctor has nothing to do for broken ribs? It takes about six weeks. And here, just about two weeks, mm. I'm virtually well, sleeping, and I'm only telling you what I do with a little faith, and I certainly didn't have a lot of faith that night, but I had a little bit, and I just turned it toward God. What amazes me about this precious man of God is I've known him for many years, and he has lived exactly what he's been preaching, a life of faith, trusting in God. And when you face a problem, that's exactly what you need to do. Just rely on the Lord. You know, when people go swimming, if you relax, you'll float. If you struggle, you'll sink. It's time to quit struggling and just start trusting. And you'll see your miracle will come quickly. <laughs>